The beginning of mankind's disobedience is seen in the history of Adam and Eve. Then, what is the sin of Adam and Eve? The Bible shows that it is the sin of eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Simply speaking, it is the sin of disobedience. When we think that all sins begin with disobedience, we can easily understand that obedience, which is the opposite of disobedience, is something very valuable that we cannot exclude from our life of faith. The mother of George Washington, who is the first U.S. president, heard many compliments about her son from the people who came to celebrate her birthday. One of them flatteringly asked her, How did you raise your son to be such a great person? And she answered, I only taught him to obey the word of God. That teaching allowed him to be a great person. Everybody, today so many people in the world are greatly concerned about their children's education. What kind of education can help my children have a good personality? Or, what education do my children need to have a better future? Parents worry greatly about these matters. I don't think we need to worry so much about these matters. If we correctly guide and teach our children from infancy to obey God, don't you think they can be people even greater than George Washington? Children obey their parents until the age of two or three when they are able to do things by themselves, like eating on their own. Once they think that they are able to function independently, they begin to become disobedient. They do not listen. When they are younger, they listen right away saying, Okay, mom. But they begin to get stubborn once they get older, when they can do things on their own as they want. Stubbornness itself is disobedience. Through this, we can see that the sin of Adam, the origin of disobedience, was passed down to all mankind. Being imprisoned by sin, no one can escape eternal death. Let us see the teaching in Romans chapter 5, verse 12. Therefore, just as sin entered the world through one man, and death through sin, and in this way death came to all men, because all sinned. For before the law was given, sin was in the world. But sin is not taken into account when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from the time of Adam to the time of Moses, even over those who did not sin by breaking a command, as did Adam, who was a pattern of the one to come. But the gift is not like the trespass. For if the many die by the trespass of the one man, how much more did God's grace and the gift that came by the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, overflow to the many. Again, the gift of God is not like the result of the one man's sin. The judgment followed one sin and brought condemnation, but the gift followed many trespasses and brought justification. For if by the trespass of the one man, death reigned through that one man, how much more will those who receive God's abundant provision of grace and of the gift of righteousness reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. Consequently, just as the result of one trespass was condemnation for all men, so also the result of one act of righteousness was justification that brings life for all men. 
For just as through the disobedience of the one man, the many were made sinners, so also through the obedience of the one man, the many will be made righteous. Brothers and sisters, all sin which mankind inherited from Adam can be forgiven through Jesus Christ. Therefore, there are two important words which we must consider, disobedience and obedience. Through the case of one man's disobedience to the Word of God, all men sin. Through another case, one man's obedience made all men righteous. Doesn't this allow us to easily understand how our acts of obedience and disobedience will affect our life of faith? Let's see Hebrews chapter 5, verse 8. Although he was a son, he learned obedience from what he suffered. Even though Jesus is God, he came to earth in the flesh to open the path of obedience so that his children could follow his path set before them. When we read verse 8 again, it reads, Although he was a son, he learned obedience from what he suffered, and once made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. Brothers and sisters, for Christians, living in obedience to the Word of God should be of the utmost importance. Then, let us see what kind of blessing God has prepared and promised for those who obey Him. Let us see Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1. If you fully obey the Lord your God and carefully follow all His commands I give you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations on earth. All these blessings will come upon you and accompany you if you obey the Lord your God. You will be blessed in the city and blessed in the country. The fruit of your womb will be blessed, and the crops of your land and the young of your livestock the calves of your herds and the lambs of your flocks. Your basket and your kneading trough will be blessed. You will be blessed when you come in and blessed when you go out. The Bible teaches us that when we obey the Word of God, we will receive God's amazing grace and blessing. Today, let us accept the will of God and become the children of Zion who follow father and mother wherever they lead us. Thank you very much.